All right, so let's talk Jokic. Uh, that series just got interesting. Uh, let's not pretend that a, that a drunk, crazy, violent fan took a wild swing at an NBA player. There's enough outrage in our politics. Take a deep breath. This was not outrageous. It was a close, intense game, and Jokic went over to retrieve a ball. Now, that's a no-no letter of the law. You could, you know, suspend him for a game, but it was a three-second moment with the owner, a road player, then it ended. You warn both, you give them a fine, maybe that's it. It's become a very entertaining series. We're already missing Chris Paul. Let's not take out another star. The NBA is guilty, too. They sell tickets, every ticket possible to fans. Used to be the media was on the floor, and it was a bit more professional. Now it's alcohol. Everybody's liquored up. They're on top of the players. There's more heckling than ever. It gets, like this moment, a little, you know, unraveled. But it's the owner. It's a star. It was a flop. The owner's got sort of a young Mark Cuban vibe. He's all into it, right? It's, he won't give the ball back. And Jokic is like, get out of my face. It's not that big of a deal. Again, if you're my age, you've seen Vernon Maxwell run into the fans. Malice in the palace, that is nothing. If the NBA is going to sell every ticket, people on the floor, liquor everywhere, you even have owners who are touching the ball and won't give it back. Let's be, let's be hospitable hosts. We already screwed the guy in the MVP. Let's be nice. Keep him in the series. I think Denver's going to win the next two games. But I just don't think, don't inject yourself into the series, right? I think the NBA historically has done a good job. The longer the playoffs go, the refs swallow their whistle. They get out of the way. Warrior fans think they're getting hosed in the series. All you do is jack up threes. Lakers are a physical team. Lakers are going to shoot more free throws than the Warriors are in every game in this series. Just the way it's going to be. It's not the referees. Handle the ball. Don't play poorly. But in this in this thing, I think you just hand out a couple of fines. You give a couple of warnings. You know, the young owner's feeling himself a little bit there and have biggest big shot in the arena that's a non-player. And Jokic wants the ball back, and he's feisty, and the crowd's on him, and they're heckling. Let's not pretend it's outrageous. It doesn't rise to throwing the best player, arguably, in the series out. Here is the coach of the Nuggets, uh, Michael Malone, uh, defending his player. I think it's crazy that Nikola got a technical foul in that situation. He's going to get the ball, and some, some fan is holding on to the ball like he wants to be a part of the game. Just, just give the ball up, man. You know what I mean? And, you know, they, they deemed Nikola doing something that was excessive, I guess, and they gave him the tech, but uh, I still don't really understand it. Hmm. Uh, take a deep breath. I, I think Denver's the better team. I do not think it is sustainable for Devin Booker to shoot 70%. Uh, they have no bench. They're incredibly thin. I picked Phoenix to get to the finals, but now that Chris Paul's out, I don't see any chance. I think Denver wraps it up. Uh, but let, let's. there's enough outrage in politics. Everybody's outraged with everything. This doesn't rise. No punches thrown. You jam fans all over the floor. They're heckling players. They're lubed up. The owner holds the ball a second too long, and the player's like, get out of my face. Take a deep breath. And we got big things to worry about. You know, they're doing 30 for 30s, romanticizing the 80s NBA where guys got into fights regularly. If this is the worst we have to deal with, we're all good. All right, Warriors, Lakers tonight. So I like Golden State uh, to win that series. They did. And I like them to win this series. But when they faced the Sacramento Kings, it was sort of like facing a lesser version of you. But the Lakers are different. They're the opposite of the Warriors. The Warriors have a veteran offensive coach. The Lakers have a rookie defensive coach. The Lakers scoring is front court. The Warriors scoring is usually all back court. One is an old school 1995 bang it inside, can't shoot the three ball team Lakers. The other is a constant movement, high screen, shooting threes, no interior scoring, now team, current team, the Warriors. One team just got thrown together at the trade deadline. The other team's got guys, Draymond, Clay, Steph, feel like they've been there forever. So the Warriors are not facing a team that they sort of get their vibe, sort of see what they do, 
instincts are kind of the same, rosters sort of the same. The Warriors are facing the opposite of themselves, and so far it has been a problem. I don't think either team is a championship team. The Lakers in the three-ball era don't shoot the three, and the Warriors getting old and are way, way too reliant on 35-year-old Steph Curry. I mean, if these were companies and they merged, there'd be a culture clash. But if you're a Laker fan, here's the really, really good news. Go back to the bubble. It's the same team that won a championship. A defensive head coach. AD was dominant. LeBron was past his prime but could be in spurts highly productive. And you were surrounded by a bunch of talented kind of bounce around the league guys. Remember, it was Rondo and KCP and Dwight Howard. You threw in a young Kuzma. And this team is Rui uh, and uh, Dennis Schroeder, uh, you know, uh, Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley, D'Angelo Russell. It sort of feels like the bubble team. And that year was a year, weird year in the bubble where young Miami ended up in the final. And this is a weird year. The number one Milwaukee Bucks are out. Miami is shocking us. Uh, it kind of feels like the bubble year that everything's a little weaker and you have two really good stars. And when they're healthy and on the floor, LeBron and AD, they are so good defensively, absolute rim protectors. It's a lot like Frank Vogel's championship team. Defense first, some bounce around the league role players not afraid to shoot. D'Lo on this team, KCP, Rondo on that team. It feels kind of the same. Now, through three games in the finals last year, the Warriors looked like they were a bit cooked. And the Warriors look old and a bit cooked now. And my guess is tonight they'll play with great urgency. Klay Thompson can't be that bad as he was in game three. Uh, Draymond Green got into foul trouble, which, by the way, the Lakers understand his value, are trying to get Draymond in foul trouble. I think we'll have a really, really good game tonight. But this series now is not really about Steph through three games. It's about Anthony Davis. He is by far and away the most dominant rim protector, the most dominant defender down low. He is also very hard to contain offensively, although a bit inconsistent. And if you watch this series, every Warrior move is a move to adjust to Anthony Davis. Just like for the last eight years, everybody's move is to adjust to Steph. So we have a big pendulum swing so far in this series where the Lakers, and, and this really describes the Lakers since AD arrived. Very, very good in the bubble, disappointing for several years, and very, very good now. I don't think that bubble team was great, and I don't think this Laker team is great. But they have the player who everybody has to adjust to every game. If you go back and look at the, the Warriors dynasty or the Heatles dynasty or the Spurs dynasty or the Lakers dynasties, generally you have the guy or the pairing everybody has to adjust to. The Splash Brothers for years, everybody had to adjust to them. It feels like to me... The entire series is the Warriors trying to adjust to Anthony Davis. And for like the second time since he's been a Laker, the bubble year was the first year, he's healthy. And so we've got the healthy AD title, disappointing never healthy. Now the healthy AD looks like this is a viable team. Uh, if he plays well tonight, because so far for the Lakers, when AD plays well, they win. Every time. Tonight... Is he going to veer back into the seesaw Anthony Davis where he's good, not special? Warriors have a chance if he's good. So far in the playoffs, down the stretch, when he is great, the Lakers win. Here was LeBron after the 2-1 series lead the win over the weekend. Uh, we're one of the best defensive teams in the league, um, if not the best. And in order for us to reach our potential, we have to defend at a high level. And... Um, uh, it's not one team in this league that tests you at that, at that, on that side more than Golden State. So, um, you know, it, it keeps us on alert, you know, throughout 48 minutes. You know, every possession, 24 seconds on the shot clock, they will make you work throughout that whole possession. So, you know, you have to be alert and it tests our defense every single possession. Yeah, if you have the player or players that the other team has to adjust to constantly, that's the making of a championship team. Duncan, Shaq. Kobe, MJ, recently, LeBron, D. Wade. If you've got the guy, forever it's been the Splash Brothers. It feels like this series is about adjusting to AD. That's good news for the Lakers. Can't wait for tonight. Every time you doubt the Warriors, though.
every time you doubt the Warriors, home road. Sacramento is as tough a place to play on the road in the league. They went in there twice and played great and won.